myself. Let's imagine that you're at a seminar and it comes to the end of the day and everybody walks out and goes into the corridor. You're walk, all walking in a big group towards the lift and all of a sudden you spout the corner of your eye. Some guy picking up the pace and trying to get to the lift before everybody else and he does well and truly way ahead of you and he's jabbing away at the, the lift call button. Lift opens. Is then pressing the, the door close button. You just get there in time to stick your foot through the door and get in there. What is he doing? What do you think of that guy? Cold, selfish, rude? Or do you think, crikey, that guy's forceful. I wish I had some of his strong will to get by in life. So you all get in the lift, but there's a couple of people that are straggling behind. And one of them carrying a suitcase and some files drops the files on the floor. The person behind them picks up the files and offers to help them with, with, with their suitcase. In jumps the person that uh, drops the files and now there's not enough room for the good Samaritan. She said, it's, it's fine, it's okay. I'll take the stairs. What do you think to that person? Kind, thoughtful, considerate, or weak and a bit gullible. Could be either really, couldn't it? So the doors close and there's the usual uncomfortable silence. And all of a sudden this guy just starts up this story about the last seminar that he was at, an amusing story about the uh, speaker. Everyone feels a little bit uncomfortable shuffling around, but he just continues. Doesn't take any notice of, of the discomfort in the room. And one guy even turns around and starts lead, reading the lift instructions, gets to the, to the first floor, the doors open and one person jumps out. He actually put his arm on the door to finish telling his story off for the last 20 seconds. I mean, what a clown. This guy just unfiltered banter with people that he didn't even know. Is that what you thought? Or do you think, what a confident guy. These situations are so uncomfortable uncomfor and it's great to have someone like that to kind of break the ice. So the guy that was reading the lift instructions now turns round and starts counting under his breath and looking round at the instructions to see whether we've exceeded the maximum number of people. You actually spotted him earlier in the corridor by himself at the coffee break, reading the fire exit list. Then he turns around again and he's looking at everybody up and down, trying to work out whether they've exceeded the weight. I mean, what a nerd, what a geek. Billy no mates, maybe, or did you think that uh, he was a, he was that private, quiet person earlier from the coffee break. And uh, you need these people in the world that are considered and diligent and thoughtful and take care of that detail. They make the world work after all, don't they? It's impossible not to judge people, isn't it? It's human nature, it's in our DNA. But here's the thing, where does it come from? Why do people judge others differently to how someone else might judge them? I mean, what do you think that the uh, lift reading instruction guy thought of the comedian that was telling the joke about the, the last seminar that was, he was at? Or what do you think of the dominant lift pressing guy who wanted to you know, get ahead of everybody else? What do you think he thought to that woman who gave up her place? What I'm gonna share with you in the coming months of Ascentis TV is the mythology that we use to understand how people behave called DISC. There are four primary reasons or four primary positions that people use to judge other people. But how do we understand that? And most importantly, why? What value is it to understand human behaviour in a business environment? One word, conflict. How many amongst you in the last month, quarter, year, have had a problem with a dysfunctional employee? dysfunctional colleague, a dysfunctional boss, and it's resulted in a breakdown. Something like, um, he doesn't care about us one bit. He never listens. He only thinks of himself. He always wants to get his own way. And I've had enough. I'm not working for someone like that anymore. Or oh, the guy is such a clown. Everything to him has to be a joke. His expense claims are a complete mess. He never keeps the CRO up to date. Okay, fair enough, it brings all the sales in, but the production people hate him and don't even get me started on his behavior at the Christmas party. Or maybe, uh, do you know, I honestly don't know why she turns up to meetings. She just sits there like a statue. She never contributes. 
It's like she's not even there. She never volunteers any ideas. Her get up and go has got up and gone and we need to move her on. Maybe it doesn't matter how many innovative ideas I bring to the table. This guy just seems to block all of them. Even when he does contribute, he microanalyzes absolutely everything. He's got a complete unwillingness to change. He's a total laggard. I'm trying to drive this business forward and he's holding his back. We need to make some changes. Actually, there's nothing wrong with any of the personalities in the four stories I've just told you. Either the person doing the rant or the target of their frustration. They're just not aware of each other's individual personalities. I said earlier, there's primarily four in the mythology that we use here. But what if they were aware of their mutual incredible strengths and then they could harness that and change a negative into an incredible positive. And I'm not talking about a one plus one equals two. I'm talking about a one plus one equals 10. I'm talking about the ability to build a highly motivated, highly functioning team that will transform your business. So in this coming series of ATV over the next three to six months, I'm going to be taking you through the steps of understanding DISC and how you can build that highly functioning team.